Hey everyone, welcome to a new plastic scanner update video. So in the last update video, you could see us visiting the makerspace. There we tested one of our prototypes. And since then we made quite some upgrades, some new improvements. So I would like to share these with you. Um, in the last video, we showed you a prototype and that was a uh, FDM printed prototype. It could still have some improvements on the, on the aesthetics. So that's basically what we've solved in this one. So this one is a very nice resin print. It houses everything much better. And it's just, uh, yeah, a nice, a pleasure to work with. Um, so that is uh, one of the hardware updates of the handheld plastic scanner for laser cutting environment. Um, with that, we also improved sort of the software uh, running on this. So we made one big firmware file where it is sort of it's now a continuous workflow so in here there is a mode to scan known samples of plastic and uh, upload them then you can go to the computer train the model and then upload the trained model back into the device and start scanning um, this was a big deal for us because we wanted to make it easy for others to also scan new plastics um, and to improve or train this, uh, this model. Um, this is now all in, in sort of one package. And one of the important updates with that as well is that we made it cross compatible for multiple devices. Sounds complex, but it boils down to something rather easy. Um, basically, we scanned a lot of plastic with one device we trained a model based on that and then we uploaded that model to another device to see if it would still recognize all of the plastics. In the past it didn't and then you needed to scan plastic with this one, scan plastic with this one, have multiple models, rather complex and not very scalable. Um, but now we made it general enough so that you can scan with one, build a model and then also use that same model on a other device. So this is a big milestone for us in order to, yeah, to grow the project and to make sure that there is a, a pre-processing and a generalization of the plastic uh, types. So uh, that is a very nice big update uh, on our side. We're still sort of improving the final bits. Maybe we want to have a piece of backing material always on there so that you can easily put a, a sheet of plastic in there. And yeah, basically now the plastic scanner also has sort of a continuous scanning mode. So what you would do is you would turn it on, you would calibrate it, and then you can start scanning. You can put a piece of plastic in there and then it will tell you the type of plastic. Um, and this can be rather ideal because sometimes you have plastics that are seemingly the same, same transparency, same thicknesses. But then one can be, for example, polycarbonate, while the other can be PVC. And PVC, you definitely no, don't want to laser cut. Um, so this really improves with the safety of the operator, if people bring in their own material for laser cutting, but also uh, helps to reduce the waste streams. Often they uh, laser cut pieces out, uh, but then they take off the foil, and they don't know what type of plastic it is anymore. So this also makes it easier to reuse scraps of material in the, in the laser cutting setting. So yeah, basically we're now ready to test and pilot these at some various locations within the laser cutting context. Um, so we're now uh, starting to get in contact with these companies to, uh, to do this. Next up would be a, a little bit of a future forecast. So now that we are happy with the results of the plastic scanner for the lasing cutting uh, environment, we want to expand to other areas as well. Ultimately, still, we want to be able to use it on a landfill in the middle of I don't know where and just identify all of the different types of plastic. Uh, but for now, we're going to do it sort of step by step. And another area that is very high on our list is 3D printing. So we would love to be able to identify different types of 3D printed plastics. They often also don't have the uh, recycling logo on there. 
And the good thing about 3D printing is that it's also relatively a, a clean plastic, so there's not a lot of uh, residue on there or oils or water, these kind of things. Um, and it's only a select group of plastics that is uh, being 3D printed. So we think that this can be a very, uh, very interesting area for the plastic scanner to expand. For that, we wrote a proposal for the Precious Plastic Open Source Fund in order to really focus on that for a couple of months, do all of these experiments and get the right material to, uh, to do some proper testing. We expect to have an outcome of that somewhere in March, where we know if we can really focus on this and develop that. Um, but we have our fingers crossed that we can do this and make, make a plastic scanner for the 3D printing environment. Uh, lastly, we have some updates from the community. Uh, Kyle, the guy from Australia, he is working on a second prototype that can be also shipped to the Netherlands. Then we can start testing it, documenting and sharing it around. Uh, we expect also some, uh, yeah, some improvements so that we have a, a better working plastic scanner. And also Sean, a software developer from the US, he helped out a lot with the PS Plot software. So that's got a revamp and we're soon going to release a .exe file, which makes it very easy for others to use the PSplot software. Um, for the coming months, we're going to focus more on documentation. So we're going to revamp the docs.plasticscanner.com website and that houses all of the information so that it's as easy as possible for you, for others to replicate the plastic scanner. For now, still only for the laser cutting environment, but over time growing to, uh, to more and more of these areas. So these were all of the updates from basically last month and, and uh, near future. Uh, when we have new updates, I will update you again with a video like this. But until then, thanks again for tuning in, for supporting the project and hope to see you next time. Bye.